which black man is in the news again? Me! I'm a professional rapper, the one full-time FIFA gamer on YouTube. When I started making joke records back in 06, I never thought I'd ever be one of the last lyricists. You took my number one video down, down. Welcome, welcome, Ali. Welcome to Season 2 of YouTube History. In this episode, we explore the past and present of this website's only genuinely good parody artist, Rocco Rocco Ali. He's a YouTube veteran at this point and deserves more recent attention to his name. Plus, there are a bunch of dumb controversies which were fun to explore. So first of all, we actually don't know Rocco's real name, or much about his past. The info we do have mainly comes from his interview on the Rubin Report. During the start of that video, he mentions how the supposed real name on his Wikipedia is not correct, and it has since been changed. But we do know he was born in Jerusalem on January 27, 1987. Surprisingly, he was extremely religious, growing up in an Orthodox Jewish environment. But throughout the course of his childhood, he would outgrow that. Rucka would eventually move to West Bloomfield, Michigan, and then Hollywood, where he currently resides. The only other thing to note about his life before making music is that, he attempted suicide in the summer of 2006. Hearing that is tragic, and he didn't reveal that until releasing a parody of the Chainsmokers Closer called Life Is Over. If he did succeed, he would have never seen how big he would become. During 2006, Rucka became known for his activities on MySpace. Remember that? <laughs> Me neither. I was like three years old during this time. He was notorious for leaving controversial and purposely stupid comments on popular videos, which gave him some attention. And then he released his first song titled, I Heart Crack. It's just a dumb rap song where he developed his first of many alter egos, DJ Not Nice. He's an Asian stereotype who has stuck around for many future projects. He would release various original songs and parodies over the next two years, all culminating in his first ever album. Titled Straight Out of West B, it was released on September 11th, 2008. He couldn't post these on MySpace though as his account got deleted earlier that year for spam due to the previously mentioned controversial comments. So he needed a new way to spread his music, and that would be through an internship on Hot 102.7's WHTD's Searchlight Saturdays, hosted by MC Search. He would even post his music videos on their official YouTube channel, which gave him a bit of outside attention. Rucka was still finding a style though, which would be found while putting together his next album. Now it must be said that Rucka has always had a complicated history on YouTube. First, the WHTD's account was suspended, motivating Rucka to post his songs independently on YouTube. But the site didn't like this, especially with one of his first hits, Ching Chang Chong, a weird parody of the Black Eyed Peas song Boom Boom Pow, where well, he appears to be mocking Chinese people and Asians in general. What those without common sense don't understand is that, well, this is made as a joke. It's made to make fun of these stereotypes by pointing them out in a humorous light. I mean, he's buried in so many layers of irony. I'll go deeper into this later in the video of his philosophies, as that really is a big part of his music. But yeah, this song and his music video were removed, which is a shame. My mistake. You want some one pan soup? I give you egg drop, oops. But this isn't the last racist song because we got I'm a Korean, a parody of I Got a Feeling. This one is honestly a lot funnier. I also must mention how hilarious his music videos are. It simply shows random Google images that crack me up harder than the songs do on some occasions. He still does this too, which is actually a good choice. Some of his parody songs are even directed at YouTube, mainly Mino Reiki YouTube, a parody of Tayo Cruz's Break Your Heart. But these two were removed too, along with various channels Rucka made. In fact, a total of 17 channels were removed from his, so he made a vlog series chronicling this madness. And the current channel he posted on was made on June 23rd, 2011, which I'm surprised has lasted as long as it has. Throughout the years, he has even reposted many of these old parodies, besides a few that fans have re-uploaded. These all culminated in his second album known as I'm Black, You're White, and These Are Clearly Parodies, which is the best possible name ever. 
Released on September 7th, 2010, it actually did pretty well and even landed at the number 6 spot on the US Billboard Top Comedy Albums chart. It contained the previously made Black Eyed Peas mock-ups and a few other early gems like Emo, Like a Nazi, parody of Paparazzi by Lady Gaga, most emos kiss other guys, cause emo chicks are fat. Go Cops, parody of TikTok by Kesha. I Can Do Whatever I'm White, parody of Whatever You Like by T.I. I dress real whack, bright white pants and a fanny pack, I can dress however I like. And Don't Be a Play of Haiti, parody of Replay by Ayaz. These songs honestly really hold up, especially the emo one, as it mocks late 2000s culture. And back then, these more offensive songs stuck out, as they were high quality and more abstract than other content at the time. Being offensive and bizarre at this time on YouTube mainly really stand out, which explains why certain creators grew so popular. Rucka even got into some controversies early on. But this wasn't any petty YouTube drama, it was some crazy real world shit. Three British students at some public school played the I'm a Korean song in class, which supposedly offended a South Korean student. This started as the class was studying different countries' musical traditions and it was slipped in. The offended student was described as being devastated, upset, very offended, and feeling very lonely, as he was the only Asian student in the class. An assistant head teacher at the school would go on to describe the song as probably racist, which would of course influence him to name his next album the same thing. Probably Racist was released on June 26, 2011, of even more weird songs. Mainly, Russia's Gay, parody of What You Say by Jason Derulo. I sold my child for a sip of vodka. My wife is named Svetlana Borsinskovskiska. And Osama Pin Found, parody of E.T. by Katy Perry. I fight for jihad. Al-Qaeda give me discount car. Two other albums were released by Rucka during this time. That being A Very Rucka Christmas in 2010 and a Very Ruck of Christmas, The Second Coming, in 2011. Oh, and I have to mention this TV commercial he wrapped in for Happy Pizza in July of 2009. This shit is surreal as fuck, which is a perfect fit for Rucka. And batter dip, or the happy wing, great with anything. Get some rib tips, or a slab of rib, or some pizza. What's this gonna cost me, kid? 9 dollars at Happy Pizza for a limited time. Get he would also make his first podcast called Rucka's Late Night Power Hour which began in June 2011 and ended in January 2012. A new podcast was made soon after called the Rucka Nucka Podcast. If you don't know, Nuckas is what the fanbase is called. It's totally something he would come up with. On September 11, 2012, Rucka released his hottest record at the time, Rucka's World. Just hearing the intro is a sign of quality. I mean, the album literally starts out with a Barney the Dinosaur parody. And the other songs are just flat out hysterical. Stuff like Hitler's Suicide Note, parody of The One That Got Away by Katy Perry. I will make it fun to powerful, to we Drive Drunk, parody of We Are Young by Fun. We drive drunk. Right, my name's Obama, parody of Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. Without Jew, parody of Without You by David Guetta and Usher. And Super AIDS, parody of Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. I love how far Rucka will go for a laugh, it's just great. And these aren't just funny because they're shocking, but because of how many layers of irony each song contain. Like a lot of the content within is surprising and catches you off guard. Plus the race he makes fun of the most is his own. That's why a lot of his parodies happen to involve Jews and Nazis. 
Also, I have to praise how he changes his voice up a lot in these songs, which can be hard to do. He'd also begin releasing a few singles, mainly one called Brony Style, an obvious parody of Gangnam Style by Psy. I'm a But another caused controversy, but not from who you'd usually expect, One Direction fangirls. On July 24th, 2013, Ruck uploaded a parody of Selena Gomez's song, Come and Get It, strangely called Zayn Did 9-11. As you can tell, it mocks Zayn by saying he committed the September 11th attacks, similar to the Bush Did 9-11 meme. This whole thing didn't really last long, however, as all that really came from the so-called drama is a business standard article of all things. But another controversy occurred only a few months later, this one more similar to the I'm a Korean drama. Towards the end of November 2013, one of his songs was heard uncensored over the speakers at a McDonald's in Wales. The specified song was a parody of Nelly's Just a Dream, humorously called Only 17. She was Nobody knew how this happened, and McDonald's issued an apology regarding those who were offended. What was Rucka's take on this? Well, he made a video mocking McDonald's by demanding them apologize to him, which is a Chad move. That McDonald's employee that played that shit is a great American, and he should get a fucking raise! Why doesn't McDonald's apologize to me, calling my music disgusting? Have you tasted the McRib? He sadly never got that apology, though. Over the course of the next year, more parodies were made, in preparation for another album, and this group of songs still remained some of his most popular, as they truly were a peak of absurdist comedy. Of course, the one you're thinking of is the Bola song, a parody of the lesser-known Fergie song, L.A. Love. This one just blew up and is where most Ruckus Nuckas first discovered his content. And then there's this Ginger song, a parody of Timber by Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. Badass Motherfucker on the Planet, Pitbull, oh, and uh, Kesha. Who should have never been born? Ginger? Who's adopted? Ginger! Who belongs with floating turds in the fucking toilet bowl? Ginger! These would be included on his best album to date, Black Man of Steel. Released on January 13th, 2015, this album has everything and more. Holy balls. You got the Kim Jong-un song parody of Cruise by Florida Georgia Line and Nelly. Minecraft won't add interest to your cock. Mine it up parody of My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark, Light em Up by Fall Out Boy. F Germany, parody of Talk Dirty by Jason Derulo and 2 Chains. Crapping, parody of Happy by Pharrell Williams. And Wigger, parody of Wiggle by Jason Derulo and Snoop Dogg. I'm a fake, I'm a fake African, acting like a thug in my baggy pants. Yeah, these were the videos that really defined his channel. And there are other popular ones I didn't mention just because of the sheer volume of great parodies Rucka made during the time. These were just dumb yet fun at the same time, and he was not going to slow down anytime soon. Released since 2016, Rucka's most recent album release was Everything is Racist with the headline song being a hilarious cover of the annoying song from the Lego movie. It's some of his best work and greatly pokes fun at both political parties in America and purposely predicted the future. The humor in it is rich and really catches you off guard. Everything is racist. Everything is racist according to me. In general, this is the golden age of Rucka, as it was over a year before the apocalypse ruined everything. Other songs on the album include I've Got Cancer, a parody of Fancy by Iggy Zalea and Charlie XCX, which is also a hilarious retelling of Breaking Bad. And my wife would screw that guy Ted, and he'd fall on his head while that fat guy is like, Where's your food at? My son has Asperger. Hero, parody of Hello by Adele. I'm sorry, I don't beer to wear. I'm Really White Dude, parody of I Really Like You by Carly Rae Jepsen. 
Talking Chinese, parody of Talking Body by Tavlo. And Trump, parody of Stitches by Shawn Mendes. Oh, and I have to mention how badass this album art is. I mean, you have some America's greatest heroes on here, like Walter White and Zayn from Ninjago. And even though no other albums have been released, Rocka still continues to release various singles on a monthly basis, which is pretty great for a musician on YouTube. But occasionally these will get removed, as he will either have to fight for them, to go back up, or just allow his knuckles to re-upload them. And if all else fails, hey, you have the website. And this pretty much has been the case for the past half decade. As said in the first chapter, Rucka would reveal more about himself in an interview on The Rubin Report. This was uploaded on December 15th, 2017, where he opens up about his philosophies, mainly that he is an objectivist, which explains quite a bit about his videos. Now, I'm no expert on this philosophy shit, but according to Wikipedia, quote, The name objectivism derives from the idea that human knowledge and values are objective. They exist and are determined by the nature of reality to be discovered by one's mind, and are not created by the thoughts one has. And yes, I use Wikipedia. Shut the hell up. This isn't high school. Go back to reading manga, Leslie. And when it seems Rucka got on this show for making a ridiculous parody of the debate Candace Owens had on it, the more you know. Rucka has also had a really silly feud of KSI, as he doesn't get the joke. He tried to expose Ali for being a racist, clearly not getting the joke of his parodies. The drama escalated thanks to this video of Rucka in a bath, and KSI dropped a diss track. Rucka would make one too, and KSI kept digging himself deeper into a dank pit. This what they call YouTube rich? Out of UK eating crumpets. Fuck this. No time for this dumb shit. I snap you like a sun chip. He fell right for the trap and looked like a dummy. They still occasionally feud of each other, with Rucka casually making fun of him in his parodies. A mini series would begin with a few epic rap battles of history spoofs, with philosophers duking it out. And his most insightful parody would be released, a mockery of Little Dicky's Earth. Rucka did not pull any punches here, as he made this out as a genuine distaste for the original version. He made fun of how shameful the cameos are, how dumb it is to just include animals, and the overall messaging. Rucka raps about how we should be giving people more rights over their property instead of letting governments fuck up everything. And he refers to Dicky as a retard, which is just plain funny. Telling me I'm hurting the unborn or the dead or a fucking blade of grass or a snail or I punch a fucking hole in the sky and we're all gonna die. 2012. Out of all his parodies, this is definitely the best. The only thing that's missing is Kevin Hart as Kanye West. A lot of his recent parodies are improvements of recent songs, as he has more meaning and humor to them. Plus, these are both topical and can stand the test of time. Like Sleeping of Michael, parody of Sweep a Psycho by Ava Max. Michael's got kinda crazy, finds boys kinda tasty, and people say, I don't know, his songs are great. Kobe, parody of Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. Kobe in the ball court, losing every game. Kobe hitting rock, Kobe hitting weed, Kobe in the chopper, going far away. And Old Town Grope, another Lil Nas X parody, this time of Old Town Road. This one really hits deep of how he makes fun of Joe Biden's creepy touching. What has to be his most edgy video is Therefore I Trans, a parody of Therefore I Am by Billie Eilish. I'm surprised I haven't seen any controversy stemming from it, as many will find the title and idea of a song to be iffy. But after a rewatch or two, we notice a deeper meaning as it references the I think Therefore I Am way better than the original song could. And he did have more modern issues, making it more clever. Plus, you can't take it completely seriously as Rucka reveals it identifies as a jar of mayo. Even though he doesn't get the views he did before, Rucka is still at it by making ridiculous parodies of older and newer music. It's really commemorable, especially since he's been doing this for the past decade and a half. But I feel like it's important to mention how smart he is. He's a troll, and there is no chance of challenging him. Plus, him being politically neutral gives him the ability to make fun of both Republicans and Democrats, 
and just making fun of everybody equally except himself. He's just unbiased. You really don't hear anything negative about him, strangely enough, besides KSI who didn't understand shit and ignored the context of who Rucka is. Rucka's a memer, who just wants to make you laugh and will do anything to make that happen. He's like a more quality version of Bart Baker. I like Bart, or used to, but many of his songs just don't work. This is because they mainly involve describing what's happening on screen and focusing too much on making fun of the artist. Like his songs don't make sense unless you watch the video. This is mainly the case with his videos past 2014, but a few still work due to having a fun idea in there, or just being simple. Rucka has more of a Weird Al style with a mix of Bart's earlier videos, though Rucka of course began making music before Bart, but both are involved in selling some sort of digital currency with Bart trying to promote some scam coin and Rucka making NFTs. I'm not a fan of either as I hate NFT culture, but as long as Rucka doesn't scam anyone, we good dog. Seriously, go watch all of Rucka's parodies, new and old. He stayed pretty consistent, and I actually watch all of his new uploads. 